So I think the word, the first thing that's worthwhile showing you um, is just basically how I use GoodX um, and run through the basic workflow uh, to give you an idea. There's obviously lots of details we can discuss, um, but I'm going to start. This isn't a real patient. This is Miles Stewart. Uh, it's a fake patient, um, but essentially we're going to just look through my workflow. So this is the diary I see has arrived. Normally what happens is the diary status gets changed to investigations. Um, what that does is it sends his details through to the work list, to Harmony, uh, and then to all the machines. And at the machines, his details are then pre-captured so that one is able to do the investigations and those are all pulled through to Harmony. If you don't know what Harmony is, I will explain what that is in a second. Essentially what I do is I go from here, I go to the clinical history page. Um, and um, the, the clinical history is laid out like this. Um, there's a few modes, so this is the story mode, um, I mean this is the normal mode, and you can see we've color coded these two different things, so I've got eye examinations, script, um, sick notes in this color, there's another eye examination, there's an intravitreal injection, there the patient had surgery, there's the script that was done probably for the surgery, another eye examination, intravitreal injections, and so you can view it in this way, if I want to see more details on the surgery, I can have a look at that, I can see that this is the procedure, the anesthetic, you know, what lens was put in, and there's a sketch as well for, for um, if needed. Um, and then I can have a look for this eye examination, I can see his history, these are his visual acuity, his pressures, how the pressures were measured, anterior segment, posterior segment, assessment, and plan. So I can view each of these individually. I can have a look at the sick note if I want to, like that. And from here, I can also email the sick note out directly or download the sick note, and I can email the sick note directly to the patient. It automatically puts his email address in there. Uh, and then uh, you can see the sick note here is attached. So there's the sick note, uh, which I can email off. And obviously you can preset certain um, emails. So if you're wanting to specifically have a sick note, you can have a pre-made uh, email so that um, that email goes out to him. Um, but that's kind of m more about the core functionality, not about the IVL form itself. Um, so I would typically start on the screen. Normally I'm in story mode. Story mode is different in that um, it opens up, it expands all those things. So the colors still um, are there, uh, but it expands all the sections. So you can see it more like you're rolling through the folder. You can see here's today, there's today's date, um, and I can see his history. I can see what his visual acuity is today, what his pressures are, his ultrafraction K readings, and what special investigations have already been performed. If I scroll down, I can see the previous examination, the previous findings, etc., etc. Uh, normally, uh, normal findings are normally in black. Anything that is uh, either a positive, uh, I mean, a, a relevant um, negative finding or a you know relevant positive finding is normally captured in red, so your eye can quickly find out what you were documenting on that patient. Um, you know, here's intravitreal injection. You can see the left eye had a vast and how that was done. Here surgery was done um, on the right side. Uh, you can see a FACO was done and what lens was you done and um, etc. That's the script that was done on the same day. And then another examination. So let's get back to today. So this is normally done by the ophthalmic assistants. This is normally how the patient gets to me. They normally have a complaint, although there hasn't been a complaint put in here yet. Uh, and the basic uh, eye vitals are in. To, to edit this, um, one just goes to the clinical case. You can see today an eye examination has been opened. And this is basically how it's documented. So this history section you can see um, is, is the same history, but you can obviously add to it. Uh, the nice thing about the history section is that it adds on, it automatically copies forward from the previous history. So as you add on over time, this will grow bigger, but you'll always have the history right in front of you. Um, and then the eye vitals. So this is obviously the patient's complaint today, uh, what the VA is, the pressures, etc. And there's ways of selecting how you did it. Did you do it with a Goldman? Did you do it with a Tonerite? Did you do it with an eye care? How the pressure was managed, uh, measured and the IOP is put in there. Um, so each of these sections are, they are cordial and open and closed. You can see, if you just click on them, it opens up that sections to expand it. Um, you have the ability to mark all these as normal. So for example, here you've got the anterior segment. 
uh, I can mark them all as normal with one click and it opens them all up, it tells them all normal, you can see the anterior chambers marked as formed and quiet, you can see the cornea is clear etc. Um, and then if you mark all as normal but the patient has a pterygium for example, you can open up that up and you can select pterygium and if you, you, can, if you want to grade it you can. Uh, and then maybe the patient also has a, a pseudophakic on the side, I'm just going to click uh, pseudophakia which is over there and he has, let's say he's got an artisan that leans that side and on the side he's pseudovacuum and he's got a PCI well on that side um, and then I can close the anterior segment section if I want and I can open up the posterior segment and maybe I just want to comment on his macula and say that he has uh, maybe there's he's got quiescent PDR now or he's got cystoid macular edema or there's laser scars and he has adequate laser or he needs this space for fill-in um, and then there's diagrams that you can um, document you can open up the diagram and I'm just zoomed in so, so you guys can see clearly for the demonstration purposes and then you can make you can choose colors and you can draw uh, whatever you want in here uh, maybe he's got some NVE, MVD, some NVE over there. Often I document fibrovascular complexes as green. Maybe he's got some green here. Uh, maybe there's a big detachment and you want to mark off there's a detachment over here, etc. Uh, and then obviously that saves the diagram there. Um, and then you'll see that as I've gone, I've clicked on certain things, uh, and these are linked to ICD-10. So you can see that there's a pterygium, there's an intraocular lens, and there's a H35.3 marked there. Uh, and so it, it generates ICD-10 codes as one goes. Right at the bottom of the screen, you can see there's the billing codes that are here. Uh, these four codes are always there to start with, and then you can see that... Um, uh, he's also had an OCT because we've selected uh, under special investigations. Um, we, he's had an OCT and you can mark other findings that you want here with these pills. Central macular thickness can be denoted here um, and over here. And then if we go down, you can, you can, and this is all customizable, you can change what these pills are and what these values are over there. And then you'll see over here, um, that there's a place to write your assessment and there's a write your plan. You can see these considerations come up depending on which pills you click and you can customize these. If you click on the blue part, it'll put it in assessment. If you click on it directly, it'll go into plan. So I can say the patient has a left origin by putting it in there and I am going to treat it conservatively. Um, or the patient has dry AMD and they're going to get an AMSA grid and they're going to be counseled about Occubite and that information is put in there. If the patient was referred from somewhere and I want to send a report, I can add a task. I can say I want to report back to the optometrist and I can say exactly who that optometrist is. And then I can assign that task and I say, please can, um, you know, one of my staff members, uh, that will then assign that task to them, take them to this patient and they can do a report. Um, if you want to book a procedure, we, we've got them here. So let's say he needs a diabetic PPB on the right hand side when the patient needs to follow up and what needs to happen on follow up. Okay, we're going to dilate both eyes when they come back. Okay, and then one can save that. Uh, and then if you look under clinical history, you'll see all that data that we put in ours there. We've got the VAs, we've got the anterior segment, we said he has pterygium, he's pseudophakic, our diagram is in there, our notes are made up on investigation, we've got assessment plan, what tasks we just as assigned, uh, what procedures we booked, when the patient must follow up, and what must happen on follow up. Now often what I, I use, which is very powerful, is the dashboard which is also all customizable and this is the patient's dashboard so on here uh, at a glance I can see my assessments and plans uh, over the previous visits you can see each visit what my assessment and plan for that patient was there's a summary section if you want to type in a summary you can continue you can do that and it helps you just have a quick look at that patient follow up this is very useful for my technicians it allows them to see what they must do when the patient comes out you know I've said the patient needs OCT there and they must be dilated when the patient comes in they can just click on the dashboard and they know exactly what that patient needs when they arrive the medical history is there we've got the uncorrected visual acuity the best corrected visual acuity uh, and you can see it graphs it over time there's intraocular pressures 
any previous medication you prescribed is here so you can quickly see what you prescribed and over time this list will grow depending on what you prescribed here's the central macular thicknesses those are plotted especially if you're doing medical ad motivations you can quickly see what his last three cmts were captus gratio is there intravitreal injections you can see he's had injections on those dates he hasn't had any laser he hasn't any, had any pathology so covid results um, blood results everything will automatically show up here as he goes that that gets pulled through from uh, empath and lancet so this is a very powerful screen again this is all customizable but we can get into how these are customized uh, at a later stage this is just more giving you an overview of how it looks and how it feels to to use it and and the, uh, the power of this um so let's say he's had a vastin on in may and again in august it's quite a big gap there but let's say we wanted to do an avastin today so I'm just going to close that. I'm going to open up a second IEVAL form. You'll see that it'll create a secondary form over here. Um, and there it is. And I'm going to change this down to, uh, we're going to give an injection, intravitreal injection. So here I can drop down. I'm going to do a, um, hmm, let's say we're going to do uh, ILEA. Uh, we're going to choose ILEA as the molecule. Uh, and we're going to do, the volume is going to be 0.5. Uh, it's going to be 3.5 from the limbus that's the technique and the strategy we're going to do let's do a prn regimen and the planned injection is going to be in four weeks time how did he respond to the previous extension he had a poor let's say a poor response to avastin um, you can put more in there if you want to write something specific about the injection itself but that enables you to doc document it what it also enables here you can see there's a uh, billing codes for ILEA I've got a macro set up which I can add to the invoice to build that patient all the billing codes we use for ILEA um, that's the big power of this is one can um, bill straight from your clinical notes um, you can customize what these billing codes are as you go which is very powerful so things aren't missed and billings aren't missed uh, if you want to sign it you just put in your pin code which i'm going to put in here and click sign and you can see there he i've, I've done a ilea for his right eye which i'm going to save i just want to show you what that does with the dashboard if i go to the patient's dashboard you can see if i scroll down to here you can see oh there we go he had an ilea on this date so this is a running track of the injection so you can quickly see when did i give the patient which injection what has happened to central macular thickness over time and what happens happened to his va and remember these are customizable if i edit these i can move these screens around and i can put the uncorrected mesh and correct VA next to the central macular thickness and I can add other sections I can add you know give it a name choose the template I'm using uh, and then tell it, what, tell it what I want to graph uh, and then I can uh, add more to the screen but that um, the, that screen is very very powerful okay uh, if I now go to clinical history again you can see here's my examination for the day and here underneath you can see he's had an intravitreal injection we've made it this green color you can make it anything you want uh, and so that's how I do an injection um, if I want to do a surgical uh, case uh, we open up another IEVAL form and I've got another template set up here uh, for surgery so I'm going to click here I'm going to go surgery and on this day we are going to do a it's a PPV for the right eye the anesthetist we can put an anesthetist in here what type of anesthetic was done and yeah okay so we're going to do a PPV now this is all customizable uh, you can have the reason for surgery you can have ports findings adjuncts used um, a triamcinolone or whatever you want uh, and these you can add more fields or less fields you can change the diagram and how you want to document uh, that there you can add custom images um, if you want and obviously if you do a faker ppv you can just add the faker in as well and then you've got those details in there At the end of the procedure you can just sign it um, and then you'll see Let's just uh, go back to clinical history. You'll see that on this day now, I also have a surgery. So I've done an intravitreal injection and then I've performed surgery. It's a slightly different green color. You can see all the details for the surgery, a FACO, a PPV was done, etc. Uh, so that's, that's quite powerful. 
The next day when the patient comes back, I want to do a um, post-op visit. Uh, I don't potentially necessarily want to go through all the details. So I'm going to do a post-op visit and I obviously want my eye vitals, I want my VA, my pressures, etc. Just to show you that those are pulled in from a machine. So these values, the VAs, the autorefraction, etc., are pulled in from a machine. There's a button here for the machine that you can press, and then these are values that are pulled in from an autorefractor. If I select that one and click OK, you'll see it pulls the VAs. There's an uncorrected VA. They didn't do BCVA today. Uh, the pressures, we obviously have to enter those manually. You can either click on the plus and just click like that, or you can just type in the values there. You can see the autorefraction and the K values put, were pulled in. And then I'm doing a post-op cataract, and I just wanted to say the lens is well positioned, the wounds are sealed, maybe there's some corneal edema, there's no signs of endophthalmitis, these are pre-selected already. Um, and then I've got other post-op, post-op PPV to regime. And you, you can add, you know, as many as you want down here. This fully customizable. And you can choose if you want to have the 3021, which is part of this form, which obviously automatically bills um, the post-op appointment. But you can add other billing codes here, and if you click on any of these buttons, you can add custom billing codes and ICD-10s to these as well. Um, and then I'm going to go back to the clinical screen to show you what that looks like. And you should be able to see that there's a post-op visit. Obviously, this has all been done on the same day, so it's a little bit weird, but here's a post-op visit. So if I go to normal mode again, you can see there's an examination, there's an injection, there's a surgery, there's a post-op. It's all very quick and easy to see. Um, so that's kind of just the basic functionality usability of the form. The imaging is obviously a huge side, so I think it's worthwhile having a, a look at that. So um, obviously when you see a patient uh, and you're busy going through the examination or you're on the screen and you're uh, in story mode and you're viewing all the signs that the technicians put in or your previous findings and you go, oh, I really want to know what his OCT looks like or has this patient have corneal topography or whatever you've done. This button over here is the harmony button which I'll click on here, uh, and that will launch uh, Harmony in the browser, and you'll see, there we go, there comes up Harmony. So now, this is a whole another beast, um, finding this very, very powerful. All my imaging gets pulled into Harmony. You can see at the bottom here, there's this nice timeline. This patient's only had a couple of examinations today. I can drop the timeline to make to maximize it, or I can open it up. You can see these little pills are all um, labeled. Orange is OCT, green is topography, uh, etc. And as I, as I go down, those little pills get smaller, or I can make them bigger if I want to see more. And then um, I've had it set up to open in this view as default, so I can see the funduses, I can see the thickness map, the OCTs I can scroll through. You can see that as I go, go through here, you can see that where you are um, on the SLO image. Um, and you can, you can, uh, yeah, I mean, you can maximize this, I'll double click to maximize. You can uh, look at the whole OCT, uh, you can scroll through the OCT, play through the OCT. Um, etc. Uh, let me just close that. Uh, you can change how it's viewed. If I want to just view those images like that, if I click on the OCT, I can put in the one OCT that side and the other OCT that side. Play through that scan, play through that scan. Uh, you can set it up a variety of ways. You can maybe, you want the fundus on that side and you want, I don't know, the SLO and the OCT on, on, on that side. Uh, so there's a variety of ways of viewing this data. Um, you can have, I mean, here's a B scan, for example. Here's corneal topography, what that looks like. Um, and you can scroll through the corneal topography. Uh, here we have perimetry, which you can view in. And there's, there's lots more to this. You can compare from before. You can chart. You can... There's reports that you can do, there's artificial intelligence that you can assign on here, you know, run algorithms and stuff, but uh, that's a whole nother discussion. But that's essentially uh, how one gets to imaging, and you can get back just to by clicking on the next tab across. So that button there will take you to imaging. Uh, on the clinical case page, if over here you want to jump through, you can go through to Harmony, and you've got an option to either go to the image viewer, which we were, or the study archive view. What that will do, it'll bring up the history of all this patient's examinations, not just today, but ever. Um, so that's just loading. You can see this is what the patients had and the dates that it was done. And if the patient more investigations, you'll have them more over time. Or you have the 
the actual view uh, which is like this uh, this is the image view and as I said you can have as many fields as you want if you have a big TV uh, or big monitor in your room you can view a lot more my screens much smaller here so uh, it one isn't able to see as much but um, uh, it's a very powerful pack system that uh, really makes it convenient to view everything in one place uh, slit lamp images etc everything get pulled in here it's an archive for for one place Okay, so that's a very quick overview of um, how I'm using it as electronic records and have image integration and how um, one is able to do uh, your billing, which you can just add to invoice with the ICD-10 codes you assigned through to the invoice. You'll see if I just click add to invoice here, you'll see on the invoice it will have those codes and it has all the ICD-10 codes and it's as easy as posting or post and switching if the if the medical aid is is um, being verified and yeah so very easy to to do the billing at the end of the consult it almost automatically generates your billing I think if you knew very little about ophthalmology bill, billing and just documented your findings clicked add to invoice and build you'd probably be pretty close um, to, to doing that so one thing I didn't show yet is there's obviously these are the main sections there's obviously other s sections uh, that one can build up uh, for example I've made one for um, indirect fundoscopy you may not do that every time and you can open that up in your system selector and then you can document signs that are more common on indirect fundoscopy you can then or you can remove that section which I've removed um, another option another thing here I've got is uh, retinoscopy so if you've done a retinoscopy uh, you can open it up like this you can say you used atropine how did you dilate the patient whether you used a power or axis cross to do it you can say the power at axis 1 was let's say 2 uh, at axis 90 and the power at axis 2 was f uh, plus 4 uh, and this was it's say minus two uh, and it will then calculate uh, your uh, prescription based on what you've put here minus six at x is 90 and the power here was plus two uh, and then it calculates what the refraction is so that's that's quite neat neat as well obviously if you use the axis cross the the axis changes by 90 degrees it depends on how you hold your written, your written scope you can make comments about the retinoscopy so there's retinoscopy um, thyroid associated orbitopathy maybe they're there and you're wanting to put in the clinical activity score so you can click which of the clinical activity tool they've got uh, and then you can type they they scored seven so and it's got a little I've just put in a little summary here of what the clinical excursion score is um, and uh, there's a variety of other sections uh, and one can build these up PSVA maybe you're wanting to say that the patient can see hundreds and thousands they can fix and follow that they don't have a preference uh, then can maintain fixation through a blink um, for um, uh, what else uh, oh this is quite useful what I've created is a, in a consumables thing so where's my consumables yeah this is I'm still busy building this but I've basically created um, uh, pills that I can use so if I'm giving a bandage contact lens if I click on bandage contact lens I've linked that to a nappy code and then it will add that nappy code to the end I actually haven't done that and just check if AutoPads has done that I haven't put those nappy codes in but one can add these uh, billing codes to um, two pills and then that can add that to to your billing as you go as well so you can uh, put your consumables on as well so that's also another section um, gonioscopy maybe you've done that uh, you're wanting to say that it's heavily pigmented or there's near vascularization or angle recessions and we can add other pills here uh, and you can document the findings and do little drawings in the angle or whatever you want or you want to just say or you can write two three one if you want to say you know what the the, the scoring is but this the, the nice thing is that all this is customizable you can add as much or as little as you want um, optic nerve function if you specifically want to say what the color vision is and you want to say the Ishihara was 16 out of 16 uh, or you want to make a comment on the Ishihara that they've got 
you know whatever color deficiency they have if you do do fonds with Mansell and you can add other other things there confrontational fields you can comment there uh, contrast you can say you did a Petty Robson or whatever you use to do contrast and put those values in there so you can build up the form as you go there's orbital section uh, and all these kind of you know I've created over time uh, but you can create more sections, add more pills, customize it, make it how you want and there's probably better that I do a, a different video on, on how you, you customize these forms to make them look and feel how you want. So if you don't like what's in, you know, what's under anterior segment and you want to remove the tear form for example, that you can do that. Uh, if you don't like these pills or you don't like these text sections or you don't want note section, you can remove them and put other uh, other bits and pieces in here so it documents the way uh, that works with your workflow. Um, uh, and then, I mean, what it would re be really nice, obviously, if we uh, share templates to allow people who've created nice sections to share uh, uh, between ophthalmologists so we can all improve uh, our templates and improve our workflows together. So uh, so one of the last things that I just wanted to show you also was um, the history section. So I'm just going to open up. Uh, so I'm just going to show you, for example, what this section looks like. Um, let's just do make a few different uh, signs here. Let's open the cornea and say there's thinning, say there's scarring, there's an ulcer. Uh, you can say the area of the ulcer and let's say the iris has uh, iris nodules and they are cupid nodules. Um, so we've made a whole lot of a lot, documented a whole lot of signs, um, and then if I, the patient then comes back another time, um, uh, let's actually go back to that. I want to just also do a drawing just so you can see the drawing also will change. So let's say here I've drawn that there's some NVI here, and maybe I've made let's make a PI. Let's just make this a bit bigger. And there's a PI over there, for example. You can see that drawing there. Okay, so I'm just going to click Save. Um, and then I'm going to open up a new IE file form. Next, say this is the next time the patient comes back. Um, just open up a new one. Okay, so here the patient comes back. You can see the history obviously always stays the same. You can add to that. It always copies forward. Now when I get to anterior segment, I have the option of clicking normal and going on as I normally do. But there's this history section. I can see oh, there was, there was there, on this date, there were some examination findings that I put in. I'm going to select those and click OK. Um, click OK. And then you'll see that the findings from the previous examination are copied forward. So from a previous examination, if you examine, it, examine the patient before, you can choose the date that you want to copy those findings forward. And then you'll see that our diagram that we did from before is still there. All our findings are the same and we can just um, change that. So that's also quite powerful that you can uh, either reset or clear it. So I'm going to clear it like that. Um, and it's all clear or I can say no, on that date the examination findings are pretty much the same maybe I'm going to just clear this image and if I want to do that I can do I can clear that image and then restart doing the drawings if I wanted to uh, let me just I didn't save there but um, yeah so so the ability to carry uh, historical data across to from a previous examination is also a, a time saver between between exams so yeah, so that's the basics of it. Um, I'm going to try and do a section more on the billing codes, on customizing. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, one could do a whole section on just how harmony works and harmony, harmony imaging, but it's very powerful that it's integrated with the, the billing software. It makes it very, very streamlined. Hope that was helpful.